sit back, strap in, and get ready for After Hours with TC Rastani. This is Abigail Harwich, executive producer, welcoming you to the show. And now, TC Rastani! Alrighty, welcome to the After Hours of TC Rastani, the podcast. We are emanating from the podcast penthouse, the palatial podcast penthouse. And I want to go around the horn right now and introduce the esteemed panel of experts who are here this evening. Starting off with the greatest celebrity star of all time, the one and the only South Boston Jeff. Hey, what's going on, everybody? How's everybody feeling? Well, we'll get into that in a few seconds. <laughs> My mentor... The host of Ricky Bittman's Jukebox, exclusively on Spotify, the one and the only Ricky Bittman. Up, up, and away, hey. Up, up, and away, hey. And, of course, the man who needs no introduction. No introduction needed. The milkman himself, Quincy Briscoe. Good evening. Good evening. I like evening. that, the milkman. You, you're the milkman. He's the milkman, and Jeff is the medicine man. <laughs> the medicine what man. What a combination. The medicine man and, and milk the milkman. And the milkman. And the milkman. Looking for a cure for the, tw- for the plague of the 20th century. <laughs> well, that's very good here, because we need a cure here. Now, for all these problems here that's going on that just screwed the world that we're living in. Today is 420, by the way, if you're listening yeah, to this, where we're recording this, it, as you can tell. If it was video, you could tell <clears throat> that Jeff is really enjoying his 420. So this is kind of like the Christmas for stoners, right, Jeff? Yeah, yeah, it all started on the date 420 when a couple, uh, like in 1971, which was also the year I was born, yeah, a couple of stoners f- from California decided to start a club which involved uh, getting high by the wall at 4.20 p.m. Mm. And uh, yeah, they became known as the Waldos, and, it, uh, and throughout the uh, 70s and the 80s, the whole thing just stuck. So mm. everybody started getting high at 4.20 p.m. Is that mm. where Where's Waldo came from? Uh, I doubt it. Yeah. He does look like kind of like a stoner, though. little stoner hat. Yeah. Yeah, wearing like an elf on the shelf pajamas or something. Yeah. Now, I'm looking down at the end of the palatial podcast penthouse table. Is that a Darth Vader bong that I'm looking at? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, it is. Uh, well, I just, uh, I've been using it today, and I thought uh, I'd share it with everybody, being 420 and everything, and you being a Star Wars fan. Well, who isn't a Star Wars fan? Yeah. But just George, like the- uh, George Lucas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he, he, yeah, he's so. Uh, for those of you who want to see this thing. picture, you can go on to my uh, Twitter, which is at After Hours TC, for an exclusive picture of Jeff and his "May the Force Be With You" bong. Yeah, it works very fine. It, uh, and uh, just like the uh, cases that came out uh, in the in the late seventies, the uh, the the figure holding cases, they have Darth, uh, they have the Darth Vader bong and the three PO bong. Ha! Well, that's Chewbacca. Yeah. Who, who would, does anyone really smoke weed out of the three PO bong? Isn't that like maybe kinda, people in England? Yeah. I just, but it's just like if you're gonna pick one, it's you gotta go with Darth Vader. You know what Darth Vader's favorite song is? Da 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 da. Uh, Pink Floyd, "Dark Side of the Moon." <laughs> no, that was a good guess. Ricky Bieber, do you have a guess? I don't. I'm intrigued. Every breath you take. Every uh, breath you take, every step you take, I'll be watching you. Do, 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 do. Every move you make, every step. Are you celebrating you 420? I think there's a little. Yeah. I think there's a little uh, contact uh, 420 going on over here, right, Quincy Briscoe? Mm-hmm. What was in that milk? Oh, just good old milk, and I was uh, <laughs> nothing more, nothing less. What are you going grass, uh, grass, <laughs> grass-fed cows? Great minds think alike. Oh <laughs> man, right at the same time, the grass-fed cows. <laughs> the grass-fed cows. Whatever the cows had in the milk is what I'm drinking. There you go. How's that sound? <laughs> <laughs> now, getting back to 420, all right, it's been around now for 52 years. Wow. Has, is, is there a big, like, have they had, like, a WrestleMania of, uh, of 420 somewhere around the country? Uh, well, they have the Hemp Fest, uh, the, uh, which start, oh, like, uh, they started having, it, it originated over in California, over in Haight-Ashbury Park, uh, after, like, uh, like, um, well, in the mid '70s, but uh, we started celebrating that over here. Uh, start in the '80s. But does it take Boston place on? Com- but does it take place on 420? Yes, it does. It does. Huh. Yeah, uh, the Hemp Fest tapes uh, uh, on the Boston Common. Is Woody Harrison still the poster boy for Hemp Fest? Uh, yes, he returned. Like uh, he just. Uh, 
I heard an interview with him uh, just uh, a few uh, a few uh, weeks ago mm. that uh, he was sober for a while ever since he made that solo Star Wars movie uh, <laughs> because it was uh, kind of in the Disney contract to not be a drug user. So he had to give it up. Yeah. And he gave it up uh, for health reasons too. Yeah, I but saw then that. Uh, um, recently he, uh, he, he was hanging out with uh, Willie Nelson uh, out oh, in Jesus. Vegas. Yeah. And uh, still sober, but like uh, like uh, they were playing poker, celebrity poker, and uh, Woody Harrelson won a great big pot and everything. And, pot of uh, what? <laughs> no, no, uh, like a, a great, uh, like a, won his hand of poker and a big old pot of money. And he just happened to be uh, with uh, Woody Allen. I mean, uh, with uh, he just happened to be with uh, Woody Harrelson. What do you, yeah, Willie, Willie Nelson? Willie Nelson, and uh, Willie had his pen on him called uh, the Willie's Private Reserve uh, that he's uh, like uh, say yeah, which is his uh, oil pen, and uh, he gave it uh, gave it to Woody, and uh, he uh, Woody took a big toke, and uh, Willie put his arm around and said, "Welcome home, brother." That's is, right. Is I saw it, that interview. That that was really good. Is that like Mel Sharpie? <laughs> <laughs> Not exactly. Now, isn't it kind of a coincidence when Hempfest happens here in Boston? It's on the Boston Common, right across the street from Cheers. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I, I, I would say uh, uh, Cheers loses a lot of business that day, or maybe gains da, da, da. a lot of business. So did they have it today? Da, da, Was it da. there? Did they did they do it? I'm sure they did. Well, it is school vacation, you know, so yeah, you know, that, And is is hemp actually is hemp legal? I know marijuana is legal here in the, in Massachusetts. Is hemp? Yes, it is. Does, so, does I mean, you can, uh, yeah, yeah, so uh, I, I, like uh, marijuana, well, uh, marijuana is, but it's uh, legal now to grow your own hemp for whatever the hell you need it for. Now, now, that, now that it's all legal, right, does it take kind of the fun out of it at all? Uh, like a little bit of it, maybe? No, I wouldn't, uh, well, yeah, like a little bit, but yeah. uh, uh, back, it just uh, takes the thrill of the hunt out of it. I, yeah. I can tell you that when you back in you and you uh, back when you were a teenager and yeah yeah you needed some weed, it was the thrill of the search. I yeah. mean, you go searching with your buddies and everything. And, yeah, uh, I need this that much weed. <laughs> it, it doesn't do me. Ah, ah, two, ah, ah, two different shows going on. Today. It's kind of like when you walk through the woods and you find a porno mag when you're under the age of eighteen. Uh, the best porn is found porn. And There's then, no question and then when you turn eighteen, you can actually go in any store and get it. It's yeah. like, eh, yeah. it's not as fun anymore. We used to, when we were kids, it was this guy lived in an apartment building over on 4th Street in Southie, and like clockwork, like the third week of every of month, he would throw his dirty magazines out, and he'd put them in a paper bag so we could all find them. And we waited. Sure enough, he came out. Because he had the new ones coming yeah, in the next had, day. He had to make room. So Unbelievable down there. Now, uh, Dirty uh, books. <clears throat> dirty, naughty books. Quincy. Dirty fiesta <laughs> shows. <laughs> Quincy, do you have any dirty books at your house? No, I don't have any of that. You know, um, no. That's for at motorcycle shops, right? <laughs> well, that's what they do at motorcycle shops. You know. <laughs> <laughs> now, since our last podcast, have you found any Cracker Jill there, uh, Bitman? Cracker Jill is out there, and like mm. I said, I completely forgot that we were going to do the taste test. we got to do that on the next one, maybe. Well, you know, that's, that's, we, can, we, we have to find it first. There's Cracker Jill is out there. You can see it everywhere. Who, um, it's okay, out there. I guess you're gonna have to go to a candy shop or uh, put them online. A candy shop? A candy shop. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> push the way for all these goodies here. Poppy you know, Cracker Joe and. Poppycock, Screaming Yellow Zonkers, Crunch and Munch. Speaking of candy quints, yeah. have you seen that giant bag of candy that he brought down? I've hit it up three times. Wow, that's what it's for, ladies and gentlemen. I want everyone to enjoy themselves. You want everybody to have diabetes? Is that what you want? No, but I, happy Halloween. And you have know? Uh, teeth happy like a Easter. character from Deliverance? Happy, <laughs> Hall happy Easter from yours truly here, ladies and gentlemen. I did two nerds and a Skittle. You did two nerds. Which ones? Lewis and Gilbert? <laughs> Strawberry and grape. Strawberry and grape. And original Skittles. This unit is not labeled for retail sale. Well, you know, I'll enjoy. You're not going to resell them. No. Or as that Bell or Cohen there would say, I provide you the Zoom, Master Quantities, and enjoy. Ow, ow. <laughs> that was on the other day. Really? That movie sucked. What? You didn't like the Cohen The Cohen oh, is moving now. Oh, it was horrible. The sketch yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you remember seeing the, the, the girl who played the daughter in anything else? I no. mean, she did okay, but like that, that, that was such yeah. a bad character with such yeah. bad jokes. Nobody's ever going, oh, get that girl for the Coneheads. We yeah. need her. I mean, Sad. I mean, Lorraine Newman played the original Connie Conehead. She yeah. was uh, okay. Uh, I mean, you, but you could tell she was doing a lot of coke back, yeah. in, the, oh, yeah. back in the 70s. But She was cute with that cone on, too, back in the day. Well, of course. You know, I'd I'd do her. The Coneheads are like, you know, 
You got to love Belda. And then think about like the way the comedy has evolved into what it is now. But think of how creative that was to come up with the whole the whole idea of the conehead. Well, that's because of the, the days organic of... idea, and you make it, and now it's just... Well, the actress, Jeff, who played Connie Conehead in the 1993 movie, her name was Michelle Burke, and the only thing on here that I can see that she, she did after that was she played Charlie Sheen's girlfriend in Major League Two. Oh, oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> well, <laughs> what a career. Saturday Night Live was good in those days, those days you know. Of course it was. You know, I'm surprised was, we haven't seen her at the conventions. There was like Steve Martin, the Coneheads, um... <laughs> All these good actors and comedians, you know, that's how it all started, you know, and then um, just, it was just clean cut fun. Great. Right? Right. Jane Curtin. Now, Jane she Curtin. wasn't bad. Now, uh, speaking of Jane Curtin, who remembers a movie called How to Beat the High Cost of Living, where her, Susan St. James, and Jessica Lange were three uh, women uh, who, uh, and they, they were dirt poor, but they were, uh, they were housewives, and they came up with a scheme to rob the local mall. I remember that. I can't remember ever Wait, watching was that, it. Though. Was that around the same time as 9 to 5? Because it sounded about like... About there. About there. Uh, Dabney Coleman, was, uh, speaking of 9 to 5, Dabney Coleman was in this feature, too. Ah. And maybe is that the first time that Kate and Allie came together because Susan St. James and Jane Curtin went on to do Kate and Allie, that TV comedy. Oh, well, uh, like I never paid attention to that TV show, but it must have been. Yeah. It, was yeah. a, it was a long it, it, yeah, show. Uh, I'd say the, this movie was 1979, 1980. Easily. I think Kate and Allie started in 84. What the hell was that about? Were they detectives? Or no, what? no, that's Cagney and Lacey. Oh, yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> no, uh, Kate and Allie were just basically... Two divorcee, you know, women who had families merged and just lived together. Mm. And they, it was, it was like a kind of thing they do with their family stuff. You know, it was that spinoff on. Yeah, they were like rich yuppies that lived in like, you know, Brooklyn, New York or something. Yeah. And they uh, had problems doing just their. Well, they had some problems, but it was, it was just, you know. They couldn't find a man. That was their first problem. <laughs> well, they had them and they lost them. <laughs> oh, speaking of, I secured tickets to Dice, by the way. Really? Dice. Go oh, enjoy Dice. yourself. A great show I can't every wait. single time. I every can't single wait. time. I cannot wait. My, my, my uh, Tosh Lent is going, and we're going with another couple. When is this? It's in June. It's a Friday night in June up at the Beverly. Well, I just went to the Beverly the other night to see the uh, Mickey Dolans of the what Monkees. Is it the Cabot? Yes. Yeah. The Cabot Theater in Beverly. And I saw Mickey Dolans there the other night. I'm going to tell you, it was an excellent, excellent show. Brought back a lot of memories. The Monkees. You must be a Monkees fan. Hey, hey, we're the monkeys. And people say we're monkey around. Your answer, folks. The rich are busy singing. It's put in the by the town. We're just trying to be friendly. <laughs> Come and walk singer today. <laughs> we're going down to the ration. And we got something to say. <laughs> hey, we're the monkeys. <laughs> you never know we'll be found. Somebody big and ready. It can maybe come to your town. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Quincy. Thank you. Fantastic there. That was awesome. Davy Jones is rolling in his grave along with the other three monkeys. You know, it was, it was really sad because he talked about his friendship with the other three guys, showed whole movies. Even Michael them. Nesmith? Yeah. Well, Mike, Mike Nesmith, there was, they, they showed a, a clip of them singing together, and Mike Nesmith got really emotional and started crying at the very end of it. He was older. And I, I still say Mike Nesmith is one of the funniest people I've ever listened to speak or, or any of his writings. He's very funny. But it was it's like, here's a guy, he's 78. Who knows what he's got left for time? And he's remembering his buddies. That they, I mean, they were kids. They were thrown together in this whole thing. What did that sound like? 67, 68? Yeah. And they uh, they released an album called Headquarters. It came out one week before another album. And this was already, the, the buzz on this album was going to be the album of the summer. You know what album came out one week later after they released Headquarters? A little thing called Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Wow. <laughs> Headquarters that was, was uh, pushed into oblivion, and it's a great album. Yeah, because it has a lot of the good songs in it that you need, you know. And yeah, but I'm just saying they got ousted. Like, did you ever time. see the really bad movie with uh, Mickey Dolan's yes. daughter? Oh, I thought you were going to say the Sgt. Pepper movie. No, no, the, the movie with uh, She's Out of Control. Yes, I have uh, seen that. With, with Tony Danza. Yes. And the, and the girl from Star Trek IV, yes, Catherine yeah. Hicks from also Child's Play. His daughter was beautiful. She was I mean, gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. But it was just, I was like, why? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know the in the late eighties the monkeys had a resurgence. Didn't they have like the new monkeys? Yeah, they, they came out, they did a few albums, they did a tour. Mike Nesmith didn't tour with them. He was kinda like pushing the whole thing in the rearview mirror, but 
then he sort of came back to it. Because well, he made a gazillion dollars off his mother invented, you know, post it a whiteout or whatever paper. it was. Yeah. Liquid paper. She came up with the formula for liquid paper. We met him uh, not too long before he died, Jeff. Remember, he was down at Chiller in New Jersey. Sure, sure. Mickey he, Dolan's. No, not Mickey Dolan's. I'm talking about Mike Nesmith. Oh, yeah. We yeah, met yeah. Mickey Dolan's a gazillion times. Uh, um, yeah, yeah. Like, I, yeah, I remember. That was a, yeah, he, he was a good one. I enjoy a lot of his work. He was the monkeys with the uh, funny hat. Yeah. But uh, what was the name of that movie he you did on Elephant Parts? Elephant Parts, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was uh, yeah, that gave me a few uh, yuck, a few yucks. Definitely, yeah, he was uh, instrumental in creating the music video. That was, he was like one of the first people to. to he's to a very call. talented man. He was. He's now uh, I remember funny. like uh, the rerun when they used to uh, do the reruns of the Monkees on Channel Fifty Six. After but, uh, school, I think that, yeah, after school, I think it was right before the Brady Bunch. Yep, and that the was how I Dale got Dorman. to know yeah. well, got to know who the Monkees were and everything. But uh, yeah, yeah they, they were they, they made me laugh. It was a funny show. I now, mean, there was always he, cute chicks on there. You're the music expert down yeah, here, Mr. I try, Bittman. I try. All right, and uh, was, was, were, were they actually musicians prior to becoming the Monkees? Yes, they were. The, the most talented musician was Peter Tork. He played five different instruments, I believe. Um, uh, 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 Mike Nesmith was a singer-songwriter and a poet. He did a lot of writing. Uh, Mickey Dolenz was a child actor, and he could play the drums, and he played a couple of other instruments. So he, he was in front of the TV, uh, in front of the camera a lot. Uh, the only one that was kind of inexperienced was Davy Jones. He was a child actor in England. Him and Mickey kind of hit it off because of that. But the funny thing about it is the first album by the Mon Monkees, they didn't play any songs. They didn't Why? write any songs. The, 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 the record company didn't want them to do it. That's so, stupid. Exactly. But when it came to the time for the second album, which was Headquarters, they put their foot down and said no. Things are going to change, and that's how they did. But they could play their music. They did they play songs from the first album as well to make yeah, up yeah, for it? Yeah. Now I think that uh, I think the Monkees was actually right around the time of Star Trek. Okay. Because uh, I think that's why Chekhov was hired because he looked like Davy Jones. <laughs> I seriously with the same haircut. Really? I think so. Well, that makes sense. I think it was in the same lineup. Yeah. The girls um, like Davy Jones. I'll tell you, even now. You were playing a very classical theme for me, and I got into it. It was got to be in the same lineup as, Nah, Smith, I gave up. You're impossible. It's got to be in all those see TV TC shows. And Joe's faces right all <laughs> those TV shows were in the exact same lineup, and Dale Dorman hosted every okay, one well, of them. That was a, that was, they were, those were reruns on 56. Yes. Was. Yeah, and Dale Dorman hosted them. No, his, his voice yeah. hosted Hosted them. Yeah. And um, they just... I'm, I'm trying to think which was the last show, because like he, he would sign off during the credits of one show, and I remember he, he one time I remember him saying, hey, Ma, I'm on my way home, and today's spaghetti and meatballs night. <laughs> which I thought was kind of funny. I think the Brady's were the last one. That's probably what it was then, after school. Because Brady's were on from I mean, 5 to five five to 6 o'clock. Think of how long the day seemed back in those days. Sure. I mean, I, you could watch those shows, and like no time would pass. And nowadays... Everything goes by so quick. I remember. Do you remember a, a TV show called Star Blazers? Yes, I do. It was on Fox 25 before it was yep. Fox 25. Yep. And the reason I bring this up is I, I was talking to somebody on uh, on Twitter. We, we, for some reason, it came up. And someone goes, do you remember this show? And they showed a clip of the thing. That show was so popular. Yeah. Kids used to skip school. To watch it in the morning, I believe, and then it. they would be they would be late for school and whatnot. Yeah. And then this wasn't just in you know our city here, but around the region. Yeah, teachers had a complaint, and they they called up Fox twenty five yeah. and they said, "Listen, most of these kids are coming into school late, so because <laughs> of that, they actually had to move it from the mornings until like three o'clock in yeah, the three, afternoon. Yeah, three or four in the afternoon. I remember that because <laughs> it was on before dinner time. I can remember my mother would be cooking dinner, but what was I? I skipped school one time because. <laughs> I looked in the TV guide, and on Captain Kangaroo, it says guest Steve Martin. Uh-oh. So <laughs> I, I faked being sick, right? So I'm home. My father goes off to work. My mother does her thing, so I'm sitting in the living room pretending I'm sick, and I'm watching Captain Kangaroo, and he goes, all right, we're going to bring him on now. Here's our guest uh, from the San Diego Zoo, Steve Martin. Oh, God. Would, I can just I imagine what Steve Martin stuff. would do on Captain Kangaroo. <laughs> it wasn't that Steve Martin, Quincy. It was a different guy named yeah. Steve Martin. Oh, So basically, right. I'm making, making it known that I'm an idiot. I wasted a whole day off Because not school. all blueberries are blueberries. Exactly. <laughs> Lesson learned. Well, at least you got a day off from school. Yeah, yeah. 
And was Steve Martin actually even around when Captain Kangaroo was on? Well, he had to have been because I was a huge fan. Okay. So I, I stayed home because I thought it was he was going to come out with the arrow and I said, Hey, Mr. Green Jeans. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mr. Moose, a wild and crazy guy. Excuse that me, Grandfather Claus. Yeah, that, yes, that is definitely worth that skipping school for. <laughs> so I'm like, this is going to be great. But you ever notice, in my mind, this is how my sick mind works. Captain Kangaroo yeah. looked like the love child of Scotty from Star <laughs> Trek I love and, when you do this. And Mr. Belvedere. <laughs> <laughs> you can put those together, and I'll tell you, it's magic. Well, yeah, yeah, you're right. Well, you know, try, throw some names out. I'll tell you yeah. who they look like. Uh, let me think. Oh, uh, uh, who's the senator there that everyone hates? John Kerry. The senator. Oh, you, Herman Munster. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe this is an <laughs> <And> Who else? <laughs> Uh, and uh, you were the love child of Herman Munster and B. Arthur. <laughs> <laughs> look up John Kerry if you're around the world. I don't know who he is. He even got plastic surgery. To look more like B. Arthur yeah, or exactly. Herman Munster? Oh. I met him once before. Yeah. Wasn't yeah. impressed. No, he's a real jerk. Wasn't impressed at all. No. Self-important. All right, come on. Give me another one. I, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm a master um, at this. Uh, Jonathan Harris. Jonathan Harris. Dr. Smith from Lost in Space. Yep. Okay. Jonathan Harris looks like the love child of... That's a tough one. Adolf Hitler. <laughs> and... Hitler. And Florence Henderson. <laughs> I think you're right. Hitler and Henderson. Hitler and Henderson make Dr. Smith. <laughs> How about Quincy? Oh, Quincy? <laughs> All right. Quincy. Let's look here. Let's 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 analyze this here. Quincy looks like the love child of Crispin Glover. <laughs> and Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> okay, okay. I'd give you that. You have no idea who any of those people are we just said. Well, I'll learn, okay? Yeah. You're going you're gonna to learn. you got a lot to learn about those two. You remember Crispin Glover? You remember the guy we met at the at the, at the uh, theater that time and you wandered in and wandered on stage? Yeah. I'm oh. Tantry, so um, I could have a good friend meet him. Right. That's what I did. <laughs> you did. You're my destiny. And your name, was, your name was Steve that night. That's right. Oh, hi, Steve. I said, hey, I got a good friend here that would like to meet you, so I, can we just... Bring them over right now. It's like, let's get and that's just like that. Now. I want to go home. All right, now, so uh, here's the backstory here. Crispin Glover, of course, played George McFly in my favorite movie of all time, Back to the Future. Right? And he was doing a weird slide presentation of some movie that he made that he would only show in private film housing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wouldn't distribute it anywhere or what that. So he had to buy tickets to see whatever this thing was. It was, called what, it. it was called What Is It? Yeah, a whole trilogy of these movies, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jeff, Jeff would know. So he was at the Brattle Theater. Uh -huh. in, uh, in Harvard, Square, Harvard Square in Cambridge, Massachusetts back in 2011. Great theater. And it was a very warm September night. Mm -hmm. And we waited and waited because he was the only person from Back to the Future I'd never met before because he's, wow. he's like, he's like you know, reclusive. He doesn't do all these very things. He, he doesn't so. do conventions or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So, of course, Jeff was in. Of course, I brought Quincy to pass the time. <laughs> And I told him that night, a friend of mine who lives out of state, his name is Steve. He's a huge Crispin Glover fan. So if he comes out, your name is not Quincy tonight. Your name is Steve. So, well, we were out there. One hour became two hours, became three hours. And Quincy goes, I had enough. He just storms into the Brattle Theater. <laughs> and we're like, I'm waiting for the, you know, the, the, the sirens to start and whatnot. <laughs> and he comes out and he had it signed. <laughs> He had the Steve autograph signed. <laughs> and then uh, the, the show broke, and everybody came out, and I recognized some people who were in there, and they go, hey, TC, your buddy Quincy. And I go, yeah, yeah, what happened? He goes, Chris Bowen was up on stage doing a presentation, and he just wandered in, went right up on stage and said, can you sign this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get things done. Uh, you do. You do and, yes. and then like 10 minutes later, Crispin Glover comes walking out, and he sees him, and he goes, Hi, Steve. <laughs> and, and, and Quincy's like, Can you meet my friends and whatnot? We took pictures and had a million autographs signed, all because of this man right here, Quincy Bresco. That's the way you do it. Well, act like you belong there. Like I said, I get things done. Now, yeah, uh, act like you run the place. Yeah. <laughs> Which he true. did that night. <laughs> 
you know, there's going to come times so like I'm going to have to uh, pull some strings. Like, hey, we're going to get this done. You know, today, I got today, places to go. Today is Crispin Glover's birthday, anyway. Oh, happy birthday, Happy birthday, birthday Crispin wow, Glover. That. <laughs> happy, happy birthday. Happy birthday, Crispin Glover. <laughs> I'm a fan of his father as well. His father. What's his father's name? Something Glover. John, John yeah. Glover? John Glover. Is that John like, Glover. Uh, Diamonds Are Forever, I believe, yep. was the one. Very that good. He- yeah, he was great in that. And I just watched him in Bless the Beast and the Children. Was just on. He was one of those guys that uh, harassed him. Church on fire. Church yeah. on fire. Uh, what I happen to know about Crispin, uh, what else interesting is he has two homes. One here in Hollywood and uh, the one house in here in Hollywood. And uh, he has uh, owns uh, his very own chateau in Prague. Yeah, yeah. He, he likes all that. Czechoslovakia. Czechoslovakia. Yeah, he yeah. likes that old Art Deco stuff. And yeah, all that he old purchased old. Uh, a chateau and uh, he says it, uh, it takes constant care. He takes constant care to keep uh, the place running. But uh, he has uh, he, he has a fit his own film studio out of there, but he raises peacocks too over there. So he's got what a life, really. What peacocks are running around. I'd love to go out there and check that out. Yeah, wouldn't that be something just to like to pick? You, you know what are the famous directors from Prague? Prague? Um, no, I don't. Uh, Polanski? No, Milos Forman. Milos. Oh, I'll be. Yeah, great, great, great. Which is probably why he used him in um, The People versus Larry Flint. That is correct. Yeah. Now, Crispin Glover used to have his. He used to have one. His phone number. He published it back in the eighties, and uh-huh. it was in the phone book, so you could crank call Crispin Glover. Yeah, God. If you dial four one one Hollywood, you know Glover Crispin, and it was listed because Crispin was like an Andy Kaufman, just a little yeah. out there. And he had his own. We used to. We found out his eBay handle back back when eBay was just, it. and he used to buy some of the weirdest stuff yeah. in the world like cracked baby doll heads we don't and, want to reveal that but I oh, do you no go ahead no no, no uh, you do it <laughs> no 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 what, what, he, uh, oddities it's his middle name spelled, oddities what is, what is that it's his middle name spelled backwards right? oh Hellion yes yeah. Hell, I don't know I don't know if it's still there oh but I, his I, real name is Crispin Hellion Glover and Hellion backwards was his his eBay code word and you name. taught me that and I looked and it was amazing the stuff he bought like these old wall sconces and stuff like that a lot of the stuff he bought was used the word art deco and just like smoked glass and it was just really interesting he's stuff. a very talented guy yeah I mean, he's a little out there, but when we met him that night, I heard stories, you know, he's eccentric and he'll run away and whatnot. Not that night. Wow. Very friendly. Yeah. Very friendly yeah. and very approachable and very personal. He's an artist. He is. He's an artist. He loves Steve over here. Yeah. Well, who doesn't? Hi, Steve. Hey, how you doing, Darren? <laughs> 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 is it George Clooney here? We're on kind of conversation. George Clooney's all of a sudden walked and, uh, in. Uh, get now, the, the, we hope you're enjoying this. Who's at the door? Very <laughs> particular episode of Clouded Conversations. We got a lot of good entertainment here for you, ladies and gentlemen. Well, even though this isn't Clouded Conversation, you uh, are I'm, high. You are tired tonight, aren't yeah. you? Yeah. You. you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this is like. Uh, Talk like you're an AM disc jockey back in the 70s. Hey, this is the Wolfman Jack. You know, I love that. Just Chucky. Name of this Chucky. You know, well, pretend you're in W. All right, it's 1978. You're on WRKO. And you're, uh, this it, is Joe Cash, and this is Dale Dorman. We got the best music and entertainment here for you. John Cash, Dale Dorman. <laughs> uh, not John Cash. Um, Joe Cash. Joe Cash. Dale Dorman. Okay. <laughs> Because that's what they grew up with. All those songs, you know. Um, All right, Quincy, you know, let's let's turn the volume down a little because we, we, we're getting a little serious here. Yeah. Well, I am serious. Okay. Huh? Were, you, yeah. were you in a car with Jeff today? No. Were you fishbowling? <laughs> because oh. you were wound up more than you've been wound up in a thousand years. Just having some fun. You're in a good mood, right? Just having some fun the other night. Nothing you, against being in a good mood. Jeff, you didn't spike his milk, did you? Um, No. Uh, did he, uh, did, 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 like, uh, <laughs> maybe uh, some of my uh, gummies got mixed in with some of that candy he brought down? <laughs> I I'm wouldn't doubt sure. it. I'd have no luck, of course. i got to get the real candy. Yeah, you get the nerds over there. <laughs> Just yeah. having some fun there. Yeah, well, okay. You, Watching you, know, radio. You, you are a very energetic person, but for tonight, for some reason, you seem to be wound up. Just having some fun with the clips. That's it. Yeah. Okay. We'll go like roach clips? Clips. Yeah. Well, movie, TV clips. That's okay. What, right. Watching radio. Unbelievable. Watching radio. You're watching radio. Huh? Yeah. I'm watching radio. <laughs> it's a very serious thing that we do. <laughs> you know, you know, if you hang around with Jeff along, you will be able to watch radio. <laughs> I'm watching radio right now. Then, um, then guilty is charged over there. Yeah, the radio will be dancing around for you. I got to say, I miss getting high. I haven't gotten high in a long time. But you're high on life, right? Yeah, well, not really. <laughs> I mean, but, you know, I like a few beers now and then. Everyone knows that. But 
Getting high is a, is a way different thing. What was your favorite high? Oh, okay. I'm going to, this is honestly got a true story. Uh, Jeff knows this guy. Mike from Southie got me high in his apartment and he had an Elvis video on. Now, you know how I feel about Elvis. You love Elvis. Elvis. I love, absolutely. I respect everything and I hate when people make fun of him. He got me so high, I'm sitting there watching Elvis on the screen of his TV. And I, he, Mike said, you sat there staring at the screen for a good 10 minutes. And finally, I just went, what the hell is he doing? This is terrible. I was like, all of a sudden I saw, I had this like moment of, I don't want to say clarity, but something else changed. And I saw Elvis Presley to a completely different set of eyes. He was doing karate on stage and everything. And I said, he's just completely wasting the audience's time. Then I could not stop laughing. Watch Elvis. Yeah, what was, what was up with that karate? He, reminded me he what? loved karate and he just incorporated the moves into his stage show. Ha! Really? Yeah. Remember when Superstar Billy Graham became a karate man? Yes. You know, he, he, I remember one night he was leaving the, the garden. He was leaving the uh, ring in the garden and everyone was trying to grab him. And he walked, he ran up the aisle just chopping people's arms. <laughs> that guy had no martial arts skills whatsoever. No, he would just like go like this. But I'll tell you, he was imposing and he was kind of scary when I was a kid. All right, Jeff, your favorite high. My favorite high? Oh, gee, well, you know. Well, uh... Well, I, I'd say that one of the best feelings I've ever got uh, was when I was about uh, eight or nine years old. Uh, what? Like I caught the chicken pox, and uh, like I took a nice warm, warm shower, and it, and I uh, that's when I got addicted to uh, euphoria and skin itching. But uh, my favorite high has to be. Uh, <laughs> Okay, uh, the, the, that guy, the, the, the drug that gave me the best high, I, I'd say I, I like some, some good mushrooms. And a good, like, uh, when I, when I uh, got a hold of some good mushrooms and saw the movie Natural Born Killers, uh, when that ca first came out, everything clicked. It just fits so perfectly. I wish I had the balls you have. I'd be so scared to take something like that. My imagination. I got a, yeah, I got a hold of some like uh, well, yeah, the m mushrooms are good because you can control a mushroom high. You don't have a bad uh, you don't have a bad trip on no, mushrooms. No, oh, no. Okay, well that's good to know. Yeah, yeah, you can control it and yeah, you very rarely have a bad trip on mushrooms yeah. because uh they they they're supposed to make you jolly and uh relax. Jolly. <laughs> Happy, yeah, a cheerful. A jolly ranch here. Quick. See, my buddies would get me high because I would just find everything absolutely hilarious. And they like to watch me laugh to the point where I just couldn't even breathe. That's okay. usually what happens when I get high. All right, I'm not even going to ask you this because you, <laughs> you're you probably on it right now, right, Quince? <laughs> oh, right now is his favorite high. All right, high. this is your favorite high. All right. You uh, had to have one. Okay. I, I'm it, not taking it, it, it wasn't my favorite, but it was the most bizarre high. It was G June 6th. Oh, man, you could pull these 2020. Days. I was up visiting friends up near the New Hampshire border, mm -hmm. and their next door neighbor was having a graduation party for their daughter. Mm. I think she was graduating college. Ooh, and been some nice looking chicks. There, there were, <laughs> and uh, we were out sitting in the yard, two old fogies sitting out mm -hmm. there, and the girl who was graduating came over with a big container of gummy worms, oh. and they were laced with with marijuana, mm -hmm. and. She's, I'm like, how potent are these? Oh, no, not bad. So I took one. One led to two. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Ended up having six of them. All right? Jeff, Jeff's eyebrows just went Now, up. well, he, he's part of this story. Oh, okay. So <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting there after like two hours. Two hours, nothing. Three hours, nothing happened. So I'm now sitting in the living room watching television. Out of nowhere, I get this burning sensation starting in my feet. Going up my ankles, oh, up scary. my legs, and completely going up until it reached my head. When it reached my head, it felt like someone dropped an anvil on my head. I couldn't move my head at all. And everybody was outlined in fire red. It was it was wow. it was just I was like panicking. I would be told. And it, it, I come to find out that each one of those gummy worms had like 10 to 15 grams of weed in it. Oh, my God. And I did six of them, so that's a lot of them. So <laughs> long story short, I had to stay up until like 5 or 6 in the morning until it completely wore off. And I, it, it, how, how it wore off was the red, it looked like a Jedi, but they weren't laced in blue. They were laced in fire red. And that dissipated, and it just melted away. And I just couldn't move my head still. And I got in my car and drove home. And it was like, I was actually, the sun was coming up behind me. And I was paranoid because it looked like the, felt like the sun was chasing oh, me home. Dear God. So I get home. I go right to bed. I get up around one or two in the afternoon. First person I call is Jeff. Yeah. 
And I called him up. I don't know if you remember this. I called him up and told him what it was. He goes, dude, you took way too much. <laughs> so that was one of the worst experiences of my life. What could he have done to help him? Didn't they say if you eat, it helps? Well, I uh, I did it. Like uh, I it it came like uh, it came uh, back to me uh, what I said uh, to him uh, when he said uh, I was like, oh, uh, have you uh, taken a taken a good dump yet? <laughs> All right, dude. All right. Did he mention this? It was like giving birth to a crap baby. All right. It's the only only way I can describe. It, it was like. <laughs> I looked in this is gross for anybody listening to this. I looked in the bowl. It looked like remember that <laughs> you're gonna relate to this, Jeff. Remember that this is your life loaf of bread on Sesame Street with Guy Smiley? Yeah, yeah. That's what it looked like. Oh <laughs> god, I remember that. It was a loaf of bread. Wow. And it was I mean, I don't know how many yeah. toxins I must have cleaned out of my system with this stuff. Yeah, I was like, you'll feel better after a good dump and everything. And you're just like, oh, I just took it. It was it was like it was like <laughs> like I shit a baby. It was, <laughs> it was like, oh, well, you'll feel better, dude. He was right. I felt much yeah. better after it. I haven't I will never touch those again. Yeah, that that's scary when you have it. ever, ever. That just that felt like it just going up my entire like a like a like a like a like a force field was going up my that, body that, that, that's scary and i could feel it and feel it. I was like oh am i having a heart attack i mean this is not long after i have yeah. sure it's like am i dying and then it just went above my eyes and boom, anvil on the head that's scary. fire outline over everybody and everybody of course is making fun of me going Aah. yeah i love that that happened to me once smoking i smoked this kid had a secrets pack one of those old secrets tins that's what used to keep your weed in back in the day not a film and container no, no, he had a Secrets tin. He opened it, right? And the stuff was like the color of like the old WWE jackets, that mustard, like yeah, yellow, gold. Century 21? <laughs> yeah, exactly. that, Exactly that color. And I remember he rolled it up and we all smoked it. And all of a sudden I started seeing myself smoking the weed. I, I, at least I think I thought I did. I was like taking a step back and observing myself. And I'm like, what the? And I'm like, oh, man. So I remember just leaving. And I, I stopped at one of the corner bar rooms. I wasn't old enough to drink, but the bartender knew me. And he says, what's wrong with you? And I told him. And he says, what are you doing that stuff for? He, he brought me in and gave me a slice of pizza, and it kind of helped me. But I was, like, starting to really starting to see some strange now, shit. Jeff, you used to hide your weed and stuff that, like, needs to crash. Was that to hide the scent? Um, well, yeah, of course. Uh, like, uh, so your mother, like, uh, there, there are some skunk weeds. Uh, like, uh, you, you, you get off the street, you, you, it'll stink your whole room up. Yeah, yeah. You have to put it into some kind of <laughs> tin. Yep. Yeah, with, with a little, uh, with a suction in it and everything to, yeah, to, to, to mask the uh, aroma of it because it's pretty pungent. Yeah. Don't you remember that scene in Teen Wolf where they were looking for the stash? That's right. They used the wolf. Now, now, Jeff, like I said, has been you know a connoisseur of the uh, Mary Jane yeah. for quite a while. And before it became legal, he had a little side business going on. Yeah. Now, some of the names of this stuff it changed weekly. You know, the, the name of the strains that you would sell. Yeah. What are some of the most bizarre names of weed that you sold? Uh, well, there, there's a lot of Star Wars uh, kind of weed, and there still are. There, there, there's like Death Star and like uh, Dark Side and, and the Force, uh, but like, I uh, like I I would say uh, Granddaddy Purple stuff like that. I mean, the Purple Haze uh, came uh, dur during the '60s. Mm. I mean, that's what uh, Jimi Hendrix was talking about when he's uh, writing his music. But uh, um. I was uh, like uh, now, favorite, now the now the new ones uh, that that are uh, like G third and uh, now they're naming it after numbers and everything and they're the they're, they're supposed to be the strongest. Well, uh, in the movie Ted, they called it mind rape. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I have never seen like uh, mind rape or that. Like they're coming, they're coming. Didn't you didn't you have one? It was called either the Macho Man or, or Randy Savage. The name of the strain was. And you you I went over went over a friend's house and you you packed up a bong. You you do it. It's it's like it's Macho Man. You got to try it. Uh, oh yeah yeah yeah. The Macho Man was that the name it of it. Like you want to try it. And then there was another one called Planet Janet. Like, uh, do you remember? Uh, Enter Planet Janet. She's a galaxy girl. <laughs> In the dark, the name found the Newman world. Schoolhouse Rock. Yeah. If you could if you could invent your own strain, what would you call it, Jeff? Hmm. What, would, what name would you give it? Uh, the, like, uh, I would uh, invent a Roosevelt Franklin weed. Ah, uh, nice. Or, uh, like, uh, or the, the, the Spicoli special. Ah. How about you, TC? What would you name your strain? Mr. Fusion. <laughs> 
Sounds I thought you were going to say flux capacitor. <laughs> oh, it could have no. been there. Or 1.21 gigawatt. <laughs> I would name mine Graceland. That's really? A, that's a nice name for a strain of weed, huh? Uh, you know what? I, you know what? Since you're here, you know what I would call one? I'd, I'd call one Disco Briscoe. Whoa. <laughs> now we're talking. There you go. It's um, a Saturday Night Live or a Saturday Night Fever special. There you go. And I don't even take that stuff. I, I, I just take... If we, um, if we named a weed after you, you wouldn't have any? If uh, we I, came I up with a it. milk and cashews <laughs> flavor. Oh, milk and cashews. I take milk and cashews, coffee, and just go back out, get out there and... Okay, like like tonight. You had pizza tonight. Yeah. Like, would you not have it? Like, when we had the Iron Sheik down here. Remember when he he, oh, he yeah. made jabroni pepperoni pizza? I remember it well. And his little secret thing was the, it was his medicine. If if Jeff had some some gimmick, some weed, and put it mixed it in with, with your pizza, you wouldn't have any? No. What how, you, how are you going to know? No one ever put anything in my stuff, you know, and... That you know of... No, <laughs> they never did, never will. All right. Well, it happened to fish. Do you remember? Don't you remember it happened on Bonnie Miller oh. to old fish? No, uh, well, uh, he got a hold of some uh, the, some uh, mushrooms or something. He got a hold of some magic brownies. Well, that, what happened? Of course, sir, I remember that. It was like, um, Wojo, you wear those brownies you brought in the, the lace with Latashi. Best fun I ever had that goes to show you. Best <laughs> fun I ever had, and it has to be illegal. <laughs> we were talking about the TV show earlier. Remember when Locker's Cookies on Taxi? Yep. Famous Amos. Locker's Cookies. Like, what would I get? What did I come back here for? Some more cookies. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, Bobby. You know, like, you know, um. Oh, now we'll have some fun and have some cookies. Laka, laka, laka. There's a drug. There's a drug. Laka, 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 laka. There's a drug in your co- these cookies. <laughs> Remember when Jim goes, there's a nice little surprise inside. <laughs> you really, uh, you tell me that laka some cookies with drugs in them? <clears throat> uh, let's check this out. No, oh, this ain't regular cocoa. This is marijuana. Remember when he, he went, Peru. Southern Peru, <laughs> 74 before the rains. <laughs> <laughs> so you wouldn't have it when a lock is cookies is what you're saying? I'm driving. Yeah, well, <laughs> well, no, no, we're driving what? That's insane. You don't have a motorcycle on the road anymore. Not yet. Uh, okay. Well, uh, Quincy, the high doesn't last for eternity. It lasts for about a couple hours. Yeah, but that uh, you got to be careful. That stuff can um, you know, do your brain damage. What are you, that commercial with the fried egg? No, but... Um, <laughs> Do you remember that one? It's your brain. Vaguely, yeah. This is your brain on drugs. Any questions? Nope. Do you really think it can give you brain damage and you might not, uh, end up doing stupid podcasts <laughs> like me? <laughs> Let me have some fun with this. Oh, no, sir, boy. That stuff can give you brain damage. You know where I got that from. Quincy, some of the stuff you eat is worse than, than weed. Weed is from the earth. It's natural. Some of the crap you it's eat. Those, natural. Those those. Jack's cheese curls. You think that's real cheese? No, oh, they, but they taste good. Um, okay. All these snack foods taste good. That's why I get them. Yeah. You know why? Because they're designed to make you feel good. They have drugs in them. <gasps> Not that I can tell. Okay. Obviously, yeah, because they're addictive. You, you get addictive to a substance. Well, I've been doing it for years, and I don't have no effect. Yeah, well. <laughs> okay. We'll play back this episode tonight. We'll show you your effect. And yeah. uh, they're gonna say the ratings are going through the roof. I'm, you know, I'm sure I they guarantee are. it. Yeah, well, um, you'd be fun at you'd be fun at like weed parties. Go there, but I wouldn't take the weed. I would just go there, dance around, and uh, to some songs. You know, and uh, how about that? Okay. I bet Crispin Glover would love to have you at one of his parties. Definitely. You definitely have you one of his movies. That's yeah. for sure. What kind of music he got? You know, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do an investigation. Okay. Probably well, you listens are, to a lot of Strauss. You are. A, oh, oh, did you say Strauss or Kraus? Yeah. Strauss. Kraus. Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> From Benson. And you didn't know Jerry Seinfeld was on Benson. Never knew that. Did you know that, Jeff? No, no. It's yeah. a first for me. Seinfeld was on Benson. I just saw a clip on YouTube. He played what? Frankie? Frankie. Terry. He was, he was all kind of flouncy and mincing around. I was surprised. 
Look that like show was a little uh, like I'm not a very political guy. That show was a little too political. Yeah, for me. I couldn't. I could not get into Benson at all. I mean, That's he went what? from being this cool butler. I mean, remember when he was like he was a real badass on soap, right? And yeah. then he just became this distinguished. He was running for mayor or governor. Or no, something. he was a lieutenant governor. Lieutenant right. governor. So well, I'm like, of course, Benson's all the governor. original Benson That's was cool. Remember the time they're sitting there in the in the in, uh, the, the the on soap the the ventriloquist dummy was smart off and and Benson just stands up takes him and throws him out the window. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that yeah. was one of the funniest scenes ever in, in the uh, show Soap. You know the the woman who created uh, Soap and Benson went on to create the Golden Girls. No, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's soap very important. Great, soap was a great show. Back when I was, <clears> oh, yeah, well, that's where Billy I Crystal got his stuff. Yep, Billy Crystal was on there. Was it was Jimmy yeah. Bayo on there? Jimmy Bayo was, uh, yeah, we, we, he got kidnapped, and uh, they tried to reprogram his brain. He was one of the sons. And uh, who else was on there? Uh, Robert Urick was on, on Soap. Really? Yeah, he was, the, I think the, that was like the first uh, cliffhanger. He got killed in the shower, and you had to find out who killed whatever his character's name was. He was a tennis pro. Yeah, there was a lot of good comedians on there. There yeah. was... Um, John Biner. Right, John Great, Biner. hilarious comedian. There was uh, the, uh, Catherine Hellman there from uh, Who's the Boss. Yep, very funny woman. And uh, oh, the guy from Empty Nest, what was his name? Mulligan. Richard, yeah. Richard Mulligan. Richard yeah. Mulligan, right. He was yeah. hilarious on that show. My, Bert. My favorite, Bert Campbell. My favorite uh, Richard Mulligan role was when he played the substitute teacher on uh, in the movie Teachers with... Um, oh, yeah. He played... Uh, he, he was really a nut that <laughs> was posing oh, a teacher. Right, yeah. yeah. And he was dressing up like characters yep. and stuff. Yeah, like George that. Washington and Abraham Lincoln. That was a great, great, great movie. Yeah, I remember Joe Beth Williams. Very underrated movie. Off. Yeah, but there was nothing there to see, though. No, but they were saying, I remember uh, Ebert and Siskel were like trashing the movie because like she was too good of an actress to do that. I remember them reviewing that movie, and they were so pissed. Well, this was that. the early 80s. That every I'm every actress was taking over. Like, uh, she's just known for doing it. She uh, shows what she's got, yeah. I mean, which isn't much, but also in, in Kramer versus Kramer. Great nude scene in Frank Kramer versus Kramer. Like I've never a, seen Kramer versus Kramer. Oh, that's agreeable. I'm not a real big fan of Meryl Streep. She's not in it a lot, really. Really? Yeah, she's re really not. Just not. I, I don't know what. It's friend. Dustin Hoffman's film. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's more Dustin best. Hoffman in that kid's film. And that kid was incredible. Well, that kid later went on to be the smartass in Sixteen, 16, 16 candles. candles. Sixteen Candles, right? Yeah. Smoking the the pretzel. I'll never forget that. I, I don't understand what Fredo saw in Meryl Streep. Uh, she was. Listen, I, I I used to feel the same way, but you know, I was watching the Deer Hunter not too long ago. She she is pretty. She she's got a look to her. Maybe because I just think of her as the old lady now. Yeah, that's probably why. You know, Deer Hunter, she was probably in her late 20s, or she, her mid to late she, 20s. She, she had a vulnerability that was very appealing. Well, she's blonde. I'm really not into blondes yeah, that much. Me neither. I, I got to be honest with you. But there was something that, about her. shouldn't say that Abby's listening to this. She, she just went, she went. <laughs> <laughs> Other than you, Ab. Um, yeah, not a fan of Meryl Streep. She just, I don't know. Why but don't cheat yourself for that movie because I'm telling you, it, it, yeah, he is, Dustin Hoffman is just phenomenal. Deer Hunter is overrated too. Uh, I wouldn't say Th that. Nothing yeah, happened in that movie. It's my dad's favorite movie, to tell you the yeah, truth. But it's, nothing happened in that movie until like an hour into it. But to me, it's it's De Niro. It's De Niro's one of his finest. I I just think it's it's the characters. I mean, the real that that like that wedding scene in 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 De Arante, You'd swear you were looking in at someone else's wedding. Just the way that whole thing was filmed. No, I'm not saying it wasn't a very well made movie. Yeah, but it was just the pacing of it. Yeah, but it's just it was the times. It does. It takes a lot of patience to get through and it everything. Does. I remember like uh, it would take three hours on uh, three and a half hours on TV 38 with dinner or two. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh, actually, no, actually, yeah. actually it was two Deer nights. Hunter. Yeah, they would have. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Nights, yeah. yeah, it was like Helter Skelter. Yeah. They had those on two nights. Now maybe because I'm, I'm just. I guess my first in, you know, interpretations of the Vietnam War were like Rambo and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, the scenes with the Russian roulette were excellent. I'll give Yo, it that. That's the only wait. time I watched it. Yeah, and that's the only good scene they ever show on, you know, on highlight reels and whatnot is that scene. But for like the first. But like that's Johnstown's. The, the, the city where they shot it, too. That's a character in the film. That's Johnstown, Pennsylvania. I've driven through there. That was the same town where they shot All the Right Moves with yeah, Tom exactly. Cruise and Leah Thompson. Yes. And I'm telling you, Slapshot, I think, was shot there. Too. Yes, it was. Yeah. It's depressing. It is, but the, it, but it, the whole movie makes you feel a certain way. Like, it, it's uh, he created something, an experience. Michael Cimino directed it. Yes. And I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying the movie isn't a masterpiece, yeah. but I'm just saying it just takes forever to get going. Right. Well, it looks, if you're in the mood for, like, a, a good action-packed film, I would go, you know, yeah, First Blood over, over Deer Hunter or anything. Right. 
But if you're in the mood for like, geez, you really want to, you, you want your hot strings to be tugged and you want emotions and everything, you can't beat the dance. You know, it's kind of like maybe because I used to see this as a kid and it was always bad weather. I can only watch that movie when it's raining. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I, I understand yeah, 100%. It completes, it. it completes the whole uh, yeah. uh, uh, ambiance. I can only watch a movie yeah. while training. It just, it, because every time it was on when I was a kid, it was always like a Tuesday and it was raining. Yeah. I can't. I, I, there's movies I can only watch certain times of the year. It's okay. like the movie The Warriors. I can only watch that movie in the summertime at night, exactly. like around 2 in the morning. Okay. Because I want to, like, when it ends, the sun's coming up. Yep. That's the only time I can watch The Warriors. I don't go that extreme. Okay, but, <laughs> but I do. But, you know, maybe I'll give the Deer Hunter... That, that's good, though. I, I appreciate that. I just can't. Maybe I'll give the Deer Hunter another look. Maybe. I haven't seen it in a while. It was on, it was on HBO maybe about a year or yeah. so ago. Actually, it was on a lot during the pandemic because it killed four hours. <laughs> yeah, that's true, yeah. Um, but I was just, you know, other things on my mind other than, you know, you know Robert De Niro shooting deer, which they yeah. only did for like 10 seconds yeah. in the movie. Yeah, yeah. I used to wonder why they call it the deer hunter. But, but what's his name? Fredo was awesome at it. He was. And, and, and you know, even the, the, the buddy there, that big dude, the right. one, yeah. one who, was, who was riding Stanley, was somebody going to find one of your girlfriends at the... <laughs> you know, I won't say what he, he told us she would be doing, but it's one of the funniest lines in the film. We should go to that Pennsylvania hick town. It's 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 impoverished. I just want to know if, it, if it's always foggy there, like it was in every one of those movies. Yeah, I guess with the well, I went I went to a wedding down there, and it was it was very damp. What I also know is we passed by the appliance graveyard, and I'm not kidding you. I wish I got onto the roof. We rented a camper to go down there, a bunch of us. I wish I had them stop so I could get on the roof to look at this. It was over a fence. Miles of refrigerators, stoves, dishwashers, just piled. So it looked like Vulcanvania, exactly, and nothing but trouble. As far as you could freaking see. It well, was there's the a steel trade. town. Were they like burning this stuff? I, I have no idea, but it just it blew my mind. And it's like that's probably on like uh, which uh, the Google satellite. What, or something. what was the song that they played at the end of all the right? Was it Blue Skies Forever? Oh, no, that's right. I mean, this that whole town was depressing. Yeah. But it's another movie I like, though. I yeah, like if you movie. want to go to that town, uh, leave me out. Yeah. <laughs> well, I've actually... Sounds like there's not much to do no, other than it, get it, shit-faced and... Uh, we, we couldn't wait to get out of I there. actually drove... I don't know if it was that town, but it was a town that looked a lot like going to Shenandoah, Pennsylvania. Oh, Shenandoah. And it was just steel mills yeah. and, like, rock streets everywhere. It was just... And you people sitting on their porch looking like they're ready to die. Mm. It was just... That's the, that's it was the hot land of America. It was, the people have built this country. It was depressing. Yeah, but hard work work <clears throat> but yeah so if, if you haven't seen the deer hunter you know let us know what you're what you're feeling is because every time i always oh, what the greatest vietnam movie of all time i i wouldn't say that. I, no no you know maybe maybe it's the best movie about you know ptsd from vietnam ever yeah. made yeah you know, but they're a better Vietnam movie. Mm -hmm. Full Metal Jacket yeah. blows it out of and the I water. And I must say, yeah. I agree with you about Meryl Streep. She is a very boring. I mean, uh, she's an Academy Award, a uh, great actress, and everything. But she, uh, she does uh, pick her movies. Most of them are, uh, most of them are pretty boring. Yeah, uh, it's like uh, my favorite. Like uh, people ask me, to, uh, what, uh, what's your favorite uh, role by Meryl Streep? I'll probably say, uh, what was that one where she died and her and Goldie <laughs> Hawn were, were killing each other and oh, shooting each other? That was which uh, is uh, becomes. Her. Death Becomes oh. Her, which was directed by Bob you know, Zemeckis, who did Back, to the, Back to the Future. Back to the Future, yeah. But, uh, you, know, you know who reminds me of the current day Meryl Streep, but I actually think she's very gorgeous and I freaking adore her, is Kieran Knightley. She's okay. like, she's now like the British yeah. Meryl Streep. Yeah. I mean, I was watching her in some movie where she was playing music, and I just, I, I was like puppy love with this woman. Yeah. So, But guess. she's like the British Meryl Streep, yeah. but I'll actually watch her. Yeah. But watch... Uh, Kramer versus Kramer because she's really not in it a lot. I like Dustin Hoffman, yeah. even yeah, though he's and, a, even though he's a dildo in real life. Yeah, yeah. Um, I but love. He, he is really good in this movie. What's your favorite Dustin Hoffman movie other than Rain Man? Uh, I would have to say Midnight Cowboy. I like them uh, in Papillon. Oh my God, that's right. Jeez, you know, I would say Papillon, Midnight Cowboy, and Tootsie. Oh, I love Tootsie. Yeah, Tootsie's a great movie. I mean, it's, I, it's I, tough with Dustin and single him down <clears> to one. Yeah, I, I'm going to have to agree with you. The Midnight Cowboy, I was sold on. I mean, uh, his like, performance in that movie. Uh, like, it was Rain Man and everything, but like, uh, yeah. but then that, when I saw that, uh, when I first saw that not too long ago, that just took the cake. Yeah. Yeah. I'm walking here. I'm walking here. He was great in that. What movie. was his name in that? Rico Rizzo. 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 Yeah. Rizzo. They Rizzo. called him Rizzo, but his real name was Rico. Rico Rizzo. If you're going to be in my place, you call me by my name, Rico. Uh -huh. Rico, Rico. And he was, uh -huh. okay, man, I'm Rico, feeling Rico, crummy. Rico, Rico, Rico. I'm feeling crummy. Yeah.
Oh, he fell. You <laughs> fell, fella. Hey, fella, you fell. <laughs> you need my friend O'Daniel. That's who you need. You need O'Daniel. He's going to be 900 years old by now, <laughs> Dustin Hoffman. Easily. Have you ever seen... Oh, this is horrible. Uh, Mr. Megorium's uh, Toy Emporium. I have not. What was that called, Jeff? Mr. Megorium's Wonder Emporium. There you go. The one with Natalie Portman. Her name was Mahoney. <laughs> I don't remember that because that was the name of the dude from Police Academy. I did not see it. He, he yeah. was this guy who, it was like a, he was like, I guess. Like was, a Willy Wonka type yeah. of character, like a toy. Uh, he owned the toy store and everything. Uh. But they, it was more than a toy store. It's been there since the beginning of the, uh, from the 1800s. Wow. And he was a magic toy maker. And they had a magic book. Uh, you, you say, I want a fire truck. And you, you look a fire truck and open it up and there's your fire truck. It was a magic toy store. See, they don't make movies. But uh, like, yeah, uh, Dustin Hoffman, you did not need him. This uh, seemed like a, the right role for someone like Eric Idle from there Monty go. Python. Good call. He would have been I perfect. He would have Natalie Portman with her little, you know, ten-year-old boy, uh, boy uh, haircut, yeah. and Jason Bateman. The movie was just. Pfft. And yeah, the only scene I liked in that movie, there was a scene where like uh, Kermit the Frog was trying to shop at the store, <laughs> and all the kids were f following him around, following Kermit around, and he was like, um, "Excuse me, I'm trying to shop here, you know, <laughs> shopping." Yeah, yeah, I know. Do you I remember know, the, the second episode to the end of Breaking Bad when Walt was hiding up in New Hampshire in the log yes, cabin? Yeah. And that, uh, what's this guy there? The, the vacuum guy brought him movies and he gave him two copies of Mr. McGorham's <laughs> Wonder Emporium. <laughs> I never noticed that. Can you imagine just, all right, you're dying of cancer, you're hiding from the, the whole oh. world because you're a meth lord, and you're in this log cabin in the middle of Bumble Stump, New Hampshire, and this guy who doesn't know movies gives you two copies <laughs> of Mr. Megorium's Wonder Emporium. All right, you're, you're, you're uh, Walter White in that cabin. What movies do you want to watch while you're hiding out? You Ooh. get two. You're going to have to take two? two to watch over and over. Okay. Um, <laughs> I have no internet access, right? No, did you, he brings you DVDs. Just, You're in the same boat as him. All right, same boat as Walter. Beggars can't be choosers okay. scenario. All right, I'm going to have Back to the Future 2, Okay, because it's my favorite of the, all of the Back to the Futures, and, and and the Shawshank Redemption. Oh, okay. Those are the two ones, because that's real long, Yeah, and you can watch it a gazillion times and never yeah, get bored yeah, of it. Yeah. What about you? I would say Jaws, because I see something new every time I watch it. And, oh boy, I would say if I had to watch over and over and over, Jaws and probably the original uh, episode four, A New Hope. Really? Yeah. The original Star Wars? I think I would, because they both would bring back really good memories for me. What about you, Sir Jeffrey? Me? Me? No, uh, I me? guess I will... Uh <clears throat> so uh, I would uh, my two are blood sucking freaks because uh, <laughs> it's a 70s film with a lot of nudity and I, I, I will never get sick of it and uh, Stanley Kubrick's The Shining nice because you kind of like you are living The Shining kind of in that log cabin oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. it's a movie about ca cabin fever oh, yeah right, here we go Quince you're locked in a cabin in the middle of the woods and you only have two movies to watch what are they going to be Wow. Jaws 2. Jaws 2. All right. All right. It's a good one. I, I, I actually love Jaws 2. Uh, two only two movies. Only huh? two. You can only have two. Okay. How about Smokey and the Bandit? There you I go. Knew it. I, I knew, knew it. it. You know, there good, you go. Two good choices. You yeah. son of a bitch. <laughs> See, the movies like you just picked, you can never get bored watching those a million no. times. No. So, you know, maybe we should do that in the wintertime, Quince. We should lock you in a log cabin. <laughs> No, I don't have to go to no long oh, All right, fine. With some weed and uh, and Jaws too, huh? <laughs> maybe, hungry man Dennis. Maybe the shark will win this time if you're high enough. No, no, no. No shark is going to win over Chief Brody. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you big bastard. I got some more to you than now. That's it. Right over here. Open wide. Open wide. See ya. Yeah. You should do that every time you walk into a room. <laughs> what the lines from Jaws yeah. are pound the table. That's exactly what he just did. The whole thing. Oh, that was the the, the lines from Jaws too. Remember, he uh, like I was trying to signal him to to, to do the sound of hitting the uh, the oar against the wire. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you big bastard! I got something for you now. That's it. Right over here. That's it. Hi, boy. Come on. Open wide. Open wide. Say ya. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> 
Someone must hit the rewind I'm button. Man. You. Are you sure you didn't have anything tonight, Quince? Nope. Uh, I, I, I need to go. We need to go take a pee test right now and bring it down to the clinic to make sure. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> He's ready. Unbelievable. Pee in a cup. Well, the clock on the wall is telling us we're almost out of time here on this exciting episode of the After Hours of TC Stani, the podcast, the 420 edition. 420. Thanks for having us, you know. Well, well thanks it, for being here, This Quint. is a lot of fun. I know it is. This is a lot, a lot. I think tonight is uh, one of our very freaking best ones yet. Yeah, you yeah. say that every episode and you're 100% right. You are. Anything you have anything final to say around the horseshoe here? I think in honor of 420, when I get uh, back to the winning bagel, I'm going to have two Miller High Lifes. That's what I'm gonna, how I'm going to celebrate. Jeff, how much medicine have you had today? Uh, I've had about three or four, uh, bo- uh, like three or four bowls full with my uh, Darth Vader. That's why I had it with me. Uh, I had it in my hand, and it's actually uh, packed uh, because I was smoking out of it earlier. But... Uh, Yep, I hope everybody has a happy and a healthy one today. Thank you, Thank you for is, watching. Uh, drive is, home carefully, and we will see you again on another exciting episode. Before of, before we get uh, thrown off the air by YouTube again because of copyright music, I think we should all hum Darth Vader's theme. That way they can't throw us off the air. Okay. And remember, this is After Hours, and we what? We yeah. never, never close. close. Dum, dum.